Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Build. Because Halloween is right around the corner and all the Halloween stores are starting to open up, I thought I would do another archive episode of me taking a cheap Halloween store hockey mask off the shelf and repurposing it and making a cool steampunk mask. Also, I kind of skipped over it in the Mad Max review because I really wasn't something I had any footage of and I didn't spend a lot of time on, but a few people did inquire about it. A lot of people were kind of curious as how I made the blood bag mask for the review. I don't have any footage of me building it because I built it really, really quickly. It was one of those things where Doug didn't request it as a build. It was something that he um, didn't really feel he needed, but when he was doing the scene when he was running through the cave, he just requested that he had some kind of a gag or a bandana or something to wrap around his mouth because that's really what was more happened in the movie. But I thought it was a missed opportunity because so much of uh, like the posters and the images that you saw were of Tom Hardy or Mad Max um, with that mask on. So I said, I think it'd be better if you went with the blood bag mask. And he said, well, did you make one? And I said, no. <laughs> so. But if you give me like 20 minutes, I can slap one together. So yeah, this is it. And all it is, is I took some scrap pieces of plastic, some thermoforming plastics that I use, and just really quickly, I drew on a piece of paper the shape of the trowel or the like fork and cut out a paper, quickly traced and really crudely cut it out of the plastic. Then I made the side brackets just quickly cut them out of plastic. I didn't measure anything, it was all eyeballed just because one, I was running out of time and two, I figured it didn't matter. It was gonna be something that uh, had to look like it was thrown together or made out of scrap parts anyway. So uh, the connecting brackets here is just some foam and then all of the rivets and stuff are gemstones that you can buy at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Joanne Fabrics or one of those kind of stores. They're like a self-adhesive um, stick-on gemstone and they come in different kind of shapes and sizes. I've used them for rivets and stuff like that before. They work great. And then I just did a really quick dry brushing with some uh, gray spray paint. I sprayed and just with a sponge, I did some quick dry brushing to give it that kind of metallic look and slapped a scrap piece of elastic on there. And that's it. Uh, it was really quick, it's kind of uh, thrown together and it was comfortable enough for Doug to wear it and still be able to talk and stuff like that. So it was a last minute build. So unfortunately, yeah, as I said, I don't have any footage of it, but I think it took about 20 minutes. I really just slapped it together really quick. Um, I would like actually to make a little bit more detailed version of it uh, because I think it would be a pretty cool, it's an easy cosplay kind of thing to do. Just wear this, get a fake chain with uh, a piece of that clear tubing and run some dye through it. And yeah, wear a, a shirt <laughs> and you've basically got your costume. So that's how that was done. And the archive build is going to be on this steampunk mask that I made. I don't think we've ever used it in a review or anything. It was just a fun build. And I planned on using it for something in the future, but so far it just hasn't happened. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this little archive episode. So let's not waste any more time. Strap on your goggles and let's go. We're gonna do a half mask and our basis for it is gonna be I got it at Party City. It was like five bucks. So we're just gonna kind of map out the design or the shape that we want, cut it using our rotary tool, and then add some off-the-shelf type items and give it a new paint job. I'll go over a few more of the uh, smaller items we're gonna use. A lot of stuff is gonna be off the shelf. Uh, we're just gonna modify it a bit by maybe making some changes, adding it to places where it would normally be, painting it, so forth. All right, some of the other items that we're going to be using on this, um, I guess, as I said, these are almost all like off the shelf type pieces. I'm going to use these gemstones. They're like cut in half. They've got uh, self adhesive on the back, and these are going to make great rivets. We're also going to be using some various spare parts that you could find at Michael's or uh, probably Joanne Fabrics, and some various. Uh, 
just sort of ornamental kind of decorative pieces. Uh, we're also going to be using probably some of these compression fittings, these brass compression fittings that I used in the past uh, for the Star Lord helmet, and uh, some other various um, pieces of hardware. Oh, some scrap leather. Uh, you can get this at generally Michaels or, or Joanne Fabrics. You can usually buy a bag of it for like 12 bucks, and it's got various parts, like just scraps like this that are left over. I've got a ton of this stuff. It always comes in handy. I've used it for all kinds of projects. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of plot out on the mask where we want to make our cuts. As I said, I'm just going to do a half mask, so I'm probably just going to use the bottom section. I'm not sure exactly how this mask is going to look right now. I'm just going to start kind of playing around with different parts and see what looks good. All right, so here's the piece that I cut off. Um, I made some extra lines here um, using a mask that I have lying around the shop to cover it and uh, give me a, a basic idea of where my face is actually going to be in the mask. Because uh, the way that this piece right now is, it's a little too wide, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so the mask is basically going to go over the face like this. But these pieces kind of flare out a little too much. What you could do is use a heat gun and heat up the edges where I've made the lines and kind of bend it back so that it actually forms around the face a little bit better. But uh, to kind of save on time, I thought maybe I would just cut these pieces off and use the scrap leather to make the sides of the mask and that'll tie right into the strap and the buckle for the back. But if you wanted to, you could actually cut that piece off and add a hinge, which actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Maybe I might do that. If I have time, maybe I'll make more than one mask. <laughs> we'll cut these corner pieces off, put leather behind it, and add a hinge there so that it folds uh, around the face a little bit uh, snugger. And uh, we could put like a decorative hinge on it. It'll actually add some texture and some character to the mask. Um, cool, I think we're gonna do that. Also, kind of neat, is the top of the mask that uh, you use to cut it off actually can become another pretty cool mask. Um, a little bit more like sci-fi kind of looking. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, so you got two masks out of uh, one basically for a future project or something. All right, so after I've uh, cut out the corner pieces, uh, this is what we're left with. So this will be the part that covers the face and then these end pieces that I cut off we're going to actually hinge and then I'll put some leather behind it and we'll attach the straps to that leather. For hinges I've got these uh, cheap, well relatively cheap, um, I think they're about four bucks, I don't know. They were three or four bucks uh, at a hobby store. They're kind of these cool decorative hinges um, so that'll be what I use to add the two pieces, and I think that'll give it kind of a, a cool look. Okay, so um, I drilled holes and temporarily put the hinges on using these uh, little fasteners that it came with. Um, just to kind of give an idea of how, last minute, how I, it's going to look, and if that's the look that I want to go with. Uh, I think actually it's going to look pretty cool. And so now I'm going to measure and cut the leather for the back of it, for the back of this piece. And um, then we'll kind of figure out what we're going to do with the, the mouthpiece. Again, I don't want it to look like a hockey mask. So we're going to find some elements to kind of uh, decorate this, but so that we can still breathe. Okay, so I drilled out my hole pattern uh, for where I'm going to put my rivets, my, or rivets or fasteners and uh, where I'm going to attach the hinges and um, some other decorative pieces here. And then what I'm going to do is take these tiny gemstones. Um, they have a self-adhesive on them, but they really 
don't stick very well. Uh, but you can kind of put them in place where you want them uh, to see how it looks first, and then um, if it you know gives it the look that you're going for, you can take them off or mark where they are, and then uh, glue them with uh, super glue uh, before we go ahead and paint. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to apply uh, the rivets kind of uh, around it to give it a, a look and uh, and see where it goes from there. Now that it's painted, um, I went ahead and added the hinges. I used uh, these little press pins that it came with that uh, kind of open up. And then uh, I just, once they were open and pretty tight and where I thought I wanted them, I just hot glued them on the other side because we're going to cover this with some cheap leather and stuff anyway. All right, so with the scrap leather, I just cut some uh, strips for the sides that are going to go along the, the side of your face. Um, equal lengths uh, for either side. And then, uh, as we saw before, I cut out the outline of the shape of that piece with a little bit extra. And then I ran these uh, fasteners here uh, through the other side. That's it. Um, <laughs> this is what uh, you're left with. Now keep in mind that you don't have to do this exact build. This is just to give you an idea of something you can do using some off-the-shelf items at the Halloween store or at a hardware store or hobby store. These are just some simple elements you can pull off the shelves, repurpose them, and with uh, some creative uh, paint work, you know, you know, put, you know really the, what sells it is the paint job. Um, Several layers of paint. I just keep going, uh, start dark and go lighter and lighter and lighter using metallic paints. Um, start off with a flat black, 
and or a bronze or, or like a, a deep brown and uh, just keep doing dry brushing over it or you could uh, do some light passes with some spray paint but the idea is you know, start dark and then go lighter and lighter so that the uh, the, the, the highlighted pieces, the pieces that stick out the furthest are, are highlighted and the brightest. Uh, I will say that a lot of these little knickknacks, these little pieces that I, I glued on there uh, or attached or riveted uh, can be a little expensive, but you can buy them in like a pack so you'll have more than just what they came with. Uh, so in total, uh, this mask probably wound up costing about 18 to $20. Um, but I also have leftover items, so if I wanted to make another mask, or maybe even two other masks, I have enough uh, stuff to do that. You know, I had tons of stuff like pulled out when I was gonna start this, and I only used a fraction of the pieces that I pulled out that I thought I was gonna use. You know, as you're building, as you're kind of working, if you're working organically, and you're just kind of like, I'm just gonna take these elements and see what I can build. Uh, it's kind of a fun way to do it, and you kind of, you know, discover things as you go along you kind of be like oh actually this piece looks really cool here or something you thought you were going to do you change your mind and you're like oh actually I, I think it'd be kind of cooler to go in this direction if it, it showed up in the video or not but I use a piece of elastic to connect the the two pieces of leather you don't have to use elastic it was an easy way to make it fit and stretch onto anybody's face and uh, you just cover it up with this other scrap piece of leather and uh, you know but if you wanted you could put buckles on here and have it be adjustable again this is just kind of give you an idea of some of the things that you could do and I hope it inspires you to go out and build some stuff so thanks again for watching and uh, see you next time I hope you guys enjoyed this episode once again I'm sorry I didn't have anything brand new for you guys but I promise that next week I will have a fresh new episode and as we're going into Halloween I thought it'd be cool if you guys shot me some more suggestions of something that you'd like to see me build for Halloween, um, a costume or a prop. So leave me your suggestions, let me know, and I'll choose one for October and build it. So tune in for that, and thanks again so much for watching.